So you played Joy. Yes. In the movie. Right. So I remember, I mean, this was, you know, one of my favorite all-time movies. And the first time I watched the movie, you know, you don't catch all the little details, <laughs> all the little Easter eggs and whatever else in the movie that, that you start to get later on. Okay. So your first scene when you call up Craig and you're cussing so, him out, accusing him of, of being with some other guy. guy in the bed with me? I did not notice that guy in the bed until like my fifth time and seeing like, the movie. Like I when I recently, F. Gary Gray just got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So mm. I went to support that. And, um, and it was funny because Cube was like, yo, you know, out of all the stuff I've done, the biggest question people have is the dude in the bed with joy when I call and we bust out laughing but you know we never you know acknowledge that you know from my from my my perspective being there that was Gary and I remember he shot it like um quickly because he didn't want anybody to come and you know fuck with it so he put his boy in it he was like come on we gotta get this done let's get this done so i can i can show them i need to show them what i mean they're not gonna understand it so i was like your boy what you, what you mean what you, uh, no 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 he that he's not gonna be with me so i was like okay well give me some boxer shorts so i put the boxer shorts that's why i have the boxer shorts on it and it's it's genius and um I, I so I gave those props to Gary on Instagram recently and people thought that I was saying that it was Gary who was in that who was that guy but it wasn't yeah, no, it was it's his not Gary. Boy. Right. It was you, his idea, it was his inspiration. It was a it was a Gism. Right, cuz you're it sitting here Oh, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> you're sitting here accusing your boyfriend of cheating on you. Right. When you're actually have another guy in the bed right. the whole time, she's a pill. Who, who, who doesn't even care? He's <laughs> he, asleep. He's just asleep, like yeah. not, not even giving a shit. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, I, I, those were the days when women were able to be. You know, like just recently. I think um, Cardi B just got dragged because she said she was robbing niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And okay, well, that's new to you guys. <laughs> I mean, you've done some of that. I know, but I'm sure Mary Magdalene has. <laughs> you know what the hell? You know, it's not, it's not new. Yeah. It, you know, excuse me. What she was doing is not new. Um, I'm sure there. It, it had to have been real, and it had to have struck home with so many people because so many people felt it and related to it. So, you know, I, I'm just saying it to me was liberating, especially for those times, because it let dudes know what you can do, I can do better, you know? And I think that's why so many women identified with Joy. You know, it's beyond the fact that she was deemed a hoochie mama, but she was independent. She had her own car. She had money. Right. You know, she was willing to give as long as you know she was being treated right. Right, and Two Live Crews, Hoochie Mama was your theme song. Yes, <laughs> and I was honored because you know Luke wrote that for me, and then you know he became my friend, and he put me in the video, and it was just it was just a, a it was I was a huge fan of Luke, you know, because of what he's brought to America, just the freedom of speech and oh, yeah. his fight and his strength and, yeah. you know, so that he even, you know, I, I was just, you know, I'm, I'm from Cleveland, so I'm a fan, you know, I'm a fan first. And so mm. when I got here and I started getting fans, you know, it was just, it was kind of surreal. You know, when you're a fan and they're a fan, it's like, wow, you're a fan. I, no, I, I feel I'm you. a fan. Okay. I feel so you. So it, it's, it's you know, it's a blessing and it's kind of surreal. What were some of the standout lines when you were cussing out Craig? You ain't got to lie. You know, and oh my gosh, 
when Beyonce said that line, you know, a lot of things that are on paper, you know, actresses make their own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of my movies, I add stuff. So, you know, a lot of that is me, you know, um, within the context of what Cube and DJ Pooh wrote. You know, and I, I do that with all my films, you know. Uh, my boy from um, Craig Brewer, you know, he was like, you know, when I was, when we were shooting um, the film, what's the name of that dang old film? Hustle and Flow. Um, you know, I was so frustrated. But then you made me look like a genius. So I I have an understanding of people, you know, because I probably could have been a psychologist and I I read beyond what's on the page and I attempt to give meaning to the urban woman's journey and struggle that people don't understand you know it's okay for this dude to be in here you know you know thinking he gonna get some for nothing for what, $5, $20, that's what you think my pussy's worth? No, nigga. You know, it's worth your life. <laughs> no, for real. It gave you life. Well. So, I'm just saying that to say, I, I believe that the characters that I play were misinterpreted as being negative for the community. I'm, I, my attempt was to show what is real and what is going on and what is being ignored. You know, our young girls are in these strip clubs mm -hmm. and they are being pimped yeah. by people looking to make a record, not someone looking to take care of your daughter or your child or, you know, provide a future. These are the types of jobs that you get in and get out. You know, Hustle yeah. and Flow was Craig Brewer's biography. You know, and people don't know that. They think that this was the story of some black guy in Memphis. No, it was a story of straight up white guy in Memphis who was pimping chicks so that he could get out the game and write about it and tell his tale. And it led to a career that's non-stoppable. <laughs>